Coming up on AgWeek TV. How has the drought here in South Dakota impacted the state crop outlook? I'll have details coming up. On the Soil Health Minute, we'll talk about how one farmer is using a cover crop to protect a sandy soil. And thanks to a generous farmer, some people in need can enjoy fresh sweet corn. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. A good farm bill is vitally important to farmers and some North Dakota farmers had the chance to give their input on the 2018 farm bill this week. North Dakota Senator John Hoven met with ag leaders from across the state at the Howe Farm near Castleton. Hoven says from what he's hearing from farmers, protecting crop insurance is their number one concern, but he expects challenges to it in Congress. We have found real savings in the farm program. If you looked at the last farm bill and you scored it over 10 year average going forward now, we'd save over $100 billion. The counter safety net is the most cost effective way and crop insurance is the most cost effective way to make sure that there's support there for agriculture. North Dakota lawmaker and farmer Michael Howe hosted the event on his farm. He's also on the North Dakota Green Growers Board. He says the ag groups are happy to have input. We're a very diverse state agriculturally. A lot of us are on the same page of what we would like out of the 2018 Farm Bill. Uh, and we heard crop insurance is, is everyone's number one priority. Howe says many growers would like to see changes to the ARC and PLC programs. The drought in South Dakota has led to historically low crop conditions, according to USDA's weekly report. However, the hardest hit areas are not where most of the corn and soybeans are grown. Michelle Rook looked into how much the drought will pull down state averages. The drought hit crops early here in parts of South Dakota. The big question will be what impact will it have on state yield averages, especially for corn? Jeff Gatsky farms near Hitchcock and says with less than an inch of rain in May and June, his dryland corn yields will be down substantially. It's going to be at least 100 bushels an acre difference between dryland and irrigated. That's going to put you around uh, about 80 bushels at best on, on the good dryland. However, in the eastern third of the state, the corn crop has more potential. Under our irrigation, we're look, looking at maybe 180 to 200. Some of the dryland have given indications from 125 to 150. Yet due to the variability, the statewide corn yield will be down. We're kind of in the camp that's in probably around that 130, and I think we're probably a little bullish on that. And we're going to be significantly less than last year on the average of all of South Dakota. There's more optimism about soybeans with the August rains, even for Elk Point farmer Doug Hansen, who planted his beans in the mud. I'm hoping we can get 50 for beans, maybe over 40, something like that. Even in the drought areas, farmers could have average bean yields. August isn't all the way played out here, but I, I think we got some 35 bushel beans out there, maybe 40 on some of the good spots. However, the state soybean yield will be off of the 49.5 bushel per acre record from 2016. Oh, I could see us probably off 8 to 10 bushel off of last year pretty easy. In Mitchell, I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. In the August crop report, USDA put corn yields at 140 bushels per acre, down 21 bushels from 2016. Soybean yield was set at 41 bushels per acre, down 8.5 from last year. As harvest gets underway, yields differ significantly across the region as rainfall varied widely this season. Near Moorhead, Mickle Pates found Harmon Tandy and his son harvesting wheat. Tandy says his corn is looking good and the soybeans are exceptional. His wheat crop is good too, but not great. This year's crop is yielding in the mid-60s, while he typically sees 75 to 80 bushels. Generally, it seems here in the valley we do better when it's a little drier season because the plants uh, they send the roots down in search of moisture and then of course they tap into more nutrients that are deeper in the soil. And our clay soils tend to hold the moisture pretty good. I uh, like being on the farm because it's really nice helping out my dad. When I was in the combine today, he told me like how you know it harvests all the wheat and when, it, he, when my dad told me that, I thought that was like very interesting. Minnesota's wheat crop is 42% harvested. The average for this date is 63%. 
There's a growing threat to soybeans and dry beans in the region. In this Soy Insight, sponsored by the North Dakota Soybean Council, we focus on soybean cyst nematode. It's a parasitic worm that has been moving north into this part of the country for about the past 10 years, and it can take a big toll on yields. The pest has been found in 19 counties in North Dakota. It's most common in the southeast part of the state, especially Cass and Richland counties. But there are hot spots around the state, and NDSU Extension is encouraging all growers to check for it. If a sample comes back to a grower that's positive for SCN, you can manage this very well. It's a combination of crop rotation and genetic resistance, and seed treatments are now available too that will help. We have really good management options for SCN. The problem is that it continues to spread, and over time it's going to increase in, in how many fields have it, and also the distribution of those fields. Essentially, SCN is moving north and it's moving west, and growers should be aware. SCN thrives in hot, dry weather and causes $1 to $2 billion in yield loss each year. You can pick up prepaid sampling bags at your local extension office in the next week or so. The North Dakota Soybean Council sponsors the testing. How are commodity prices affecting real estate? Hear from someone on the front lines of it all, next on Ag Week TV. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstock Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. We attach it to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. For a limited time, Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, is offering 0% financing for 60 months for qualified customers on a large portion of our used combines inventory. For a complete list of our best used combine deals, visit combine17.com or contact your local Titan Machinery store. In addition to long-term 0% financing, Titan Machinery is also offering 12 months free full machine warranty on select late model used Case IH combines. Don't delay. Go to combine17.com or call your local Titan Machinery dealership before the program ends. When your job requires being seen to be safe, look for high-visibility workwear from Home of Economy, where you'll find the best in Carhartt high-vis t-shirts, hoodies, and safety vests, plus other top-selling enhanced visibility coats, jackets, caps, and gloves. Day or night, rain or shine, stand out and stay safe on the job with help from Home of Economy, your high-vis headquarters. We've got you covered at the guaranteed lowest price. Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. I'm one pony, one thirty, one thirty, oh. one fifty-five. Like once around the block, two hundred and twelve, five right here, now I have them times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Welcome back to Ag Week TV. Joining us now is Scott Steffes with the Steffes Group. Scott, we're taking a look at your 2017 spring market outlook. Give us an idea of where we were at this spring. Recovery, which was great. You know, the spring markets brought a little bit of renewed optimism from, you know, the changes in agriculture these last few years. And, of course, when commodity prices were rising, everybody was on board and it was a great time. And we experienced a tremendous amount of prosperity. And, of course, with uh, changes in prices comes adjustments. And where do you see us now? Hanging in there. Hopefully it'll stick around. You know, we always talk about market forces. And, of course, commodity prices kind of trump everything because it's what farmers get for their crops. And last year we were fortunate. We had great production, kind of offset some of the commodity problems that we were having. Uh, this year, you know, it depends on where you're at. You've got some commodity price issues, obviously. But we also have some production problems. And, of course, it'll be interesting to see as we go through fall how that's going to affect 
you know, the rest of the market in terms of machinery values and real estate values. What are the major factors that go into market predictability? From a market perspective in terms of machinery, as auctioneers, um, the single greatest influence of machinery values is commodity prices. It trumps interest rates. It uh, trumps production. And what are you seeing as far as trends in uh, used machinery? Used machinery, you know, it's hanging in there. And, and the difference between now with low commodity prices and what's happened in previous markets is that a lot of the major manufacturers learned their lessons of the 80s. And, uh, you know, when I was a little boy growing up, you go to a dealership, you'd see five, six-year-old tractors that were brand new and not sold. And uh, we don't see that in the markets. And, you know, we've taken a 50% market reduction in some of these new pieces of equipment. But the manufacturers didn't continue to build. And that's really uh, provided some support with what's happening in uh, the machinery markets. You still have to have machinery to cover the land. And those, if you can find machinery available in the used market, that's kind of where folks are looking because it's a little less expensive. How have the depressed commodity prices affected real estate? Here in the Dakotas, the quality land hasn't seen too much of a diminish in value because of the production capability out there. The marginal land is always the items that are the most affected, and I think you'll see that as it's going by. But there's one thing you have to always remember about farmland and agriculture is that it's a very, very scarce commodity. And I can't tell you how many real estate auctions we do where land hasn't been for sale for 60 years or even, even longer than that. You know, 10 years is fairly recent. So when you think about that, that's where that scarcity factor comes in, really supports the real estate market. Scott Steffes with the Steffes Group. Thanks for joining us today. How did the rainfall affect the drought and harvest outlooks? Your agri weather forecast is next. And later on the Soil Health Minute, we'll talk about how one farmer is using a cover crop to protect his sandy soil. We're excited to bring you the new Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Premier Shortline USA is your dealer for Meridian storage and grain handling. Fifty years ago, Meridian Manufacturing designed the first smooth wall hopper bin. This innovation set the standard for hopper bins across North America, completely self-cleaning with no obstructions. Smooth wall hopper bins have become the preferred choice for safe and efficient storage. For temporary grain storage to complete systems, contact Nate or Brent at Premier Shortline USA. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. A little lesson here tonight. Drought is nothing more than the absence of rain. It's not a disease that can be spread on the wind or some type of an insect. And even though we started out the summer with increasing areas of drought in the northern plains lately, that has been definitely being reduced, at least in most areas. We'll take a look at the drought monitor. Not much heat in the forecast. 
for the entire month of August, I've been saying before we get to the end of the summer, there's one more heat wave in there. That's not looking very likely the way things are looking. And it's the beginning of the tropical storm season or the peak of it, and that may have some impacts. But let's start with the drought monitor. Still some red in the northern plains. Eastern North Dakota, western Minnesota, things have mostly improved. There are still pockets of severe drought over western North Dakota, Montana, but the areas have improved overall mostly. It's getting a little worse down in southern Iowa where there are some pockets of uh, fairly extreme drought beginning to show up, but uh, that's a fairly small pocket, not likely to have a huge impact on grain prices. Meanwhile, watch Texas. Right now, things are looking pretty normal. There's a tropical storm that may impact Texas this weekend with some extremely heavy rains, and it's not certain yet, but if that tropical moisture gets drawn up into the, uh, into the mid-latitudes, some parts of the southern Corn Belt could be looking at some extensive rainfall sometime this week. This is going to be a weak hurricane or a tropical system. Where exactly that rain will go, it's not certain, but I think in Texas at least it has the potential to be extremely heavy. If it gets caught up in the westerlies, it may eventually move up into the middle Atlantic states. That remains to be seen. Some of the models are showing most of the moisture remaining in Texas and Mexico. The rest of the nation this week, not a lot of heavy rainfall expected, and the west will continue to be hot and dry. I keep thinking, it's going to be one more round of that warm weather spreading out into the northern plains, but really, it's just going to be mild to warm across the northern plains and the Corn Belt. Cool weather is threatening, but it doesn't look like it's going to move down yet, maybe into the Great Lakes by the end of the week. And with one more wave coming in, it may manifest itself by the time we get to the Labor Day weekend. Meanwhile, the heat may start building back into the southern states once the tropical moisture moves out. The second week now, we're talking Labor Day weekend and beyond. A little wave could produce probably draw a little heat up into the west, and I think it's also going to start drawing very cool weather by the first week of September into parts of the northern plains and the Great Lakes states. Moisture, maybe one round of rain moving up mostly over the eastern Corn Belt and the middle Atlantic states. Most of the high plains and the west is expected to be dry this week. So the drought areas overall continue to be reduced here at the end of this summer. I don't know if there's going to be any more real hot weather in the forecast, and keep an eye on Texas and other parts down south could be some extremely heavy rainfall. Field Drainage Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second generation family owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. Located in the heart of the Red River Valley, Bloomfield Enterprises sells the finest trailers in the business. Family owned and operated since 1997, Bloomfield Enterprises prides themselves on carrying a wide variety of trailers for customers to choose from. With Bloomfield Enterprises, you can be assured that customer service is more than just a phrase. With a full service shop and repair center, we are committed to take care of our customers even after the sale. Whether you're in the market for a new trailer or good quality farm equipment, we have just what you're looking for. Call today or visit us online at bloomfieldtrailers.com. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have it. a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms. And as a result, more people can eat. We're excited to bring you the new Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. 
Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. The Ag Week Soil Health Minute is sponsored by the North Dakota Corn Council and the North Dakota Soybean Council. Using cover crops after a short season crop is one way to protect the resource. In this Soil Health Minute, Abby Wick looks at one field where a farmer has recently seeded some cover crops. I'm in a field in Jamestown where the pea crop was just harvested last week. This farmer had a decision to make on whether he should come in with a cover crop directly after harvest or spray a herbicide to terminate any volunteer weeds and then come in with a cover crop in seven to 10 days. In this case, because of moisture conditions, since it's been so dry, but then they got a few timely rains in the last week or two, he decided to come right in with his cover crop and get it seeded and get it established. He went with an oat pea mix for his cover crops. He did 32 pounds of oats and around 30 pounds of peas. So his goal is that he could come in with a broadleaf later in the season, spray out any of these thistles and other volunteer weeds that are out here while still maintaining his oat cover crop. So you can see in less than a week's time, the oat cover crop is actually established and, and growing which is a huge win for this area because it has been so dry. One of the main reasons this farmer wanted to get a cover crop on this field is because it's the first year going into no-till and he wants to put it on the fast track to recovery. So this is a great example of how a farmer is using timely rains to get a cover crop established after a short season crop. The powerhouse in canola research is located in Langdon, North Dakota, where the crop is king. Researchers have been working on a number of studies. If you're getting ready to harvest, you'll want to be sure you're checking for club root. NDSU Extension Specialist Leslie Lubenow says the canola in Cavalier County is looking fairly decent. It is a little bit dry, but the canola is handling it pretty good. But as soon as you move west, um, over to the Sarles area and all the way over to Rolla and further, um, their canola crop has definitely been impacted by the lack of rainfall. She says they focus on canola research here at the Langdon Research Extension Center. They're looking at ways to help farmers deal with high seed costs. Canola, it does have a large tech fee with it if it's a Roundup Ready or a Liberty Link. Station agronomist Brian Hansen did a seeding rate study, a study to see if they can reduce the seeding rate or change the row width to get maximum yield with the correct distribution of plants. For the best net return, if you had a seeding roll width of 6 to 12 inches and a seeding rate of 6 to 9 seeds per square foot, that that would maximize your yield. Lubenow says 9 to 14 seeds per square foot is normal. We do recommend that farmers, if, if they're going to follow this type of advice, look on your label and look at what a, like a thousand seeds weigh to calculate out what, what kind of weight you would need to put into your, okay. your seeding equipment. The rotation is canola and wheat in this area. They're starting to introduce soybeans. And farmers have been asking, can I get a little bit of a yield bump if I put my canola on after the soybeans or can I put it if I put it on after the wheat? Will I get a little bit of yield bump in here? So they did a rotation study. Actually, we found out there's no difference between it. Either one is a correct management practice. Club root was found in the county in 2013. It's a disease that forms club formations on the roots. And it can reduce your yield down to zero, potentially, depending on when, when the roots are infected. And it's a soil-borne disease. I kind of like to think about it as soybean cyst nematode because it's in the soil. Soil can move it around, but it, it's not a nematode. Okay. It's a phytoplasm. Lubenow is urging growers to watch for club root this harvest season. What you look for around swathing time is look for a stand of canola that it's prematurely dead and brown and get out of the swather if you're swathing and go ahead and pull that canola up and if you pull up and you see clubbed roots you definitely have club root disease in your in your fields. Lubenow says there are genetics that work against club root. If you spot it and have questions, call the Langdon Research Center. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, see how one grower sweet corn patch is helping to feed thousands.
WDAY 970 AM has added the Red River Farm Network to its lineup. Join the Red River Farm Network team as we partner with Ag Week to cover the area's number one industry, agriculture. Join us Monday through Friday for Country Morning at 7 AM, opening markets at 8.30, market updates at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30, closing markets at 1.30. We're committed to reporting agriculture's business on the Red River Farm Network, Ag Week, and WDAY 970 AM. For over 40 years, Northside Implement has been your Gell and Vermeer dealer in Webster, South Dakota and Lidgerwood, North Dakota. With new equipment including feeding, grain handling, haying, and skid steer, as well as a nice selection of used equipment including sprayers, spreaders, seating, as well as tractors and loaders. Northside Implement stands behind the equipment they sell with quality service guaranteed. See us for all your repairs and parts, from tillage to skid steer loaders to combines and everything in between. Contact Dave, Lydell, Tom, or Chris today at Northside Implement or visit our website for our complete equipment listing. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Egg Week TV, presented by Kaler Farms. There's nothing better than fresh corn on the cob in the summer, but not everyone can afford that or other fresh produce. Kevin Skunis, who grows corn on his farm near Arthur, North Dakota, is happy to share part of his crop. Over the weekend, the National Corn Growers VP invited friends and family to pick sweet corn. He grew especially to donate to the Great Plains Food Bank in Fargo. Nancy Caravu was there to receive it. She says they have several growers who plant produce specifically for the food bank, and they appreciate how much time and effort it takes. We're really trying hard to bring in fresh produce because for people that have limited grocery budgets it's not um, usually on their grocery list to put corn or potatoes or onions on there and so we want to do what we can do to help and bring that into families uh, dinner tables. This is a, exceptionally important to me to know that people are getting the right kind of food and and this is a this is a something once a year that we can provide to them and it, it's just the right thing to do. Caribou says they'd love to have even more produce donations, especially apples, this fall. Thanks for watching this week's edition of AgWeek TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.